Ah, uh, yes, summer's here. What a great way to kick it off is by going to Fairy Lake in Acton, Ontario. Great little lake. It's peaceful and quiet. Uh, great place to kayak, go canoeing, fishing, just to kick back and relax. Paddle boarding, too. Yeah, so everyone comes up here from Toronto and Guelph, all over. I like this splash pad. Check it out. It's all catering to fishing. You've got a big perch spewing water, bobbers spewing water. What a cool idea. <laughs> That's great. And there are perch and uh, sunfish and even pike in this lake. People are using their blow-up boats, which I love using. Or if you don't have that, you can rent a canoe, which is also great. Not great if you have no money. <laughs> yeah, so I bring my blow-up boats here, my canoes. Canoes. Oh, this picture is funny. This is me trying to say everything that I'm saying now. But uh, I pushed a uh, photo instead of record video. So, whatever. This is what I ended up with. <laughs> Stupid idiot. Anyways, here I am blowing up my, uh, for the first time actually, my rowboat. I usually use a blow-up kayak. I want to try out this rowboat. It's okay, made for fishing. has fishing rod holders. I'm try it out for the first time on Fairy Lake here in Acton, Ontario. Well, the boat's all loaded up, ready to go. I'm gonna try it out for the first time. I hope to God it doesn't sink. Holy shit. <laughs> well, here goes nothing. <laughs> I was a bit nervous. Set up a little towel for comfort. Gently and slowly get in. So far, so good. Still floating. Didn't pop. <laughs> It's funny this lake is called Fairy Lake. I was kind of worried about going in here. You might come out of the lake gay. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like the name. It's very cool. It's kind of magical. You imagine little fairies running around. Not gay guys. Fairies. You know, oh, from story books. Jesus. <laughs> Off I go. Oh, yeah. There I go. This is great. Feeling this is the sun great. on your face. Rowing in a nice calm lake. Enjoying nature. These rowboats are amazing. The kayaks and now this rowboat. It's, gonna, it's great. A little early for fishing, but uh, it's gonna enjoy the sun and man, love it. <laughs> yeah, you just sit back, relax. Oh yeah. What is that sound in the background? I think it's an ice cream truck. And I'm stuck in the middle of the lake. Fuck. <laughs> I should roll back as fast as I can so I don't miss out. Yeah, what a peaceful, beautiful place to come. I just love it. This is only a small section of the lake. It's actually quite big. This is only a little lagoon that you're seeing now. And uh, yeah, it's really quite ex excellent. As you can see, everyone loves coming here to canoe and kayak. I'm going to have to make it back here again, if possible. But there's so many great lakes and rivers in Ontario. you got to try and fit them all in in the short summer. Well, I'm not going to try fishing in this blow-up boat. I just knocked over the tackle box over here. And lures were all over the place. And amazingly, it didn't stick into the boat. And um, it stuck into my hands. Everything else. So lucky I didn't puncture a hole, so no. Kind of stupid to go fishing in a blow-up boat. I'll have to think of another plan. Oh well, too bad you couldn't try fishing off the boat, but it's kind of stupid. A hook will pop the boat, sink, and die. Oh, <laughs> Look at these weeds in the lake. Great for pike and sunfish to lurk around in. Oh well, I'll have to just fish off the dock. Hey, there's another kayak like I have. Yeah, so great. These blow-up boats are amazing. You can try them out anywhere you want to just put them in the trunk of your car and off you go so here it is fairy lake in acton ontario glad to know my boat worked excellent the seahawk too and um can't wait to try it out in some other lakes that's it uh thanks for coming along on the boat ride with me <laughs> Ha! <laughs>
just finishing up my summer tree. I got a garland of flowers that I found at the dollar store. Put it on there and ta-da, it's a summer tree. Amazing. It was a Christmas tree, it was an Easter tree, now it's a summer tree. Can't wait for the Halloween tree. That's going to be amazing. So, yeah, what a great way to kick off the summer. Going to Fairy Lake, um, trying out the rowboat. And uh, I think next I'll try kayaking in Stratford since that's the last place my mom was alive. Makes sense. Plus it's a great place to kayak. you got bridges to go under and everything else. Well, I'm glad to say after rowing around in Fairy Lake, I didn't come out of the lake. Turned into a fairy. <laughs> I'm not gay. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of worried about rowing around in that lake with that title. You're thinking, why is it called Fairy Lake? What the hell is going on here? But no. <laughs> yeah, speaking of fairies, it's been, what was it, Pride Month this past summer? What month was it? I have no idea. Anyway, Pride Month. Proud to be mentally ill? Proud to desire some guy's balls in your mouth? Like being a guy and you, you fantasize and want that? You want to stick your, guy, your dick in a guy's ass or have some guy's dick in your ass? or whatever, or a gerbil, or a fucking whatever the hell they do, and you're proud of that? Proud to be mentally ill? That's fucking sick, I'm sorry to say. There's obviously something wrong with the wiring in the brain. Because life's all about male and female. That's what's supposed to be together. Not two of the same sex. You can love each other as a human. Doesn't mean you have to start sucking on their shit. <laughs> Like, fuck. I think, I don't know. I, I just don't get it. It's unbelievable. You know, I think some people think if they have feminine traits, like I do, I'm sort of perfectly fine with being feminine in some aspects, like, you know, baking, cooking, the house decor, uh, whatever. doesn't mean you're supposed to be a fag. It's like, I'm well adjusted. I can be free to be who I want to be. I can have long hair and not think I'm a girl. I don't have to think that I'm supposed to be a girl, that I am a girl because I wish to have long hair or that I'm not into sports and drinking beer and being a fucking redneck with a mustache and a pickup truck. Like, I think that could be part of the problem. Society saying males must be this way, females must be this way. And when you don't think that way, you think, something's wrong with you, maybe you think you're a girl because you're not thinking the right way, it's crazy. So, um, I think that's the root of a lot of the, the problems anyways, especially the transgender bullshit scene. I think a lot of people are doing it because it's kind of a trendy thing, perhaps. Trendy. <laughs> Fuck. Hey, what's the current trend? Uh, just turn into a girl or turn into a boy. Like Cher's cute little daughter, Chastity, turns into this fat, ugly fucking guy. And no one magically turns into a male. It doesn't matter how much shitty hormones and drugs you inject into your body. Whatever you might want to cut off and adjust from surgery. You're still a guy. You're just a guy with no dick. Or you're a girl with no tits. Whatever you did to yourself. And no matter what you're injecting, you're still born what you are. It's unbelievable that some people can't even describe what a woman is. Like, everyone's gone absolutely fucking nuts and there's nothing to be proud about it. Like, so why can't, you know, if people are gay, and that, that is kind of sick, but if you were proud, why can't you just walk down the street in normal clothes, like fucking normal decent people? Do you have to be half naked or naked, humping each other, swinging your fucking dick around and there's kids in the audience and they don't get arrested for this shit? It's not about being gay anymore. It's about being just a sick fucking pervert freak is what you really are if you're doing that shit in public. And then some of, I think some of the argument is like, well, it's perfectly fine to be naked. No. <sighs> no. You just want fucking people to see you naked because you're, you're, you're demented. Anyways. You know what's really sick? Is that transgenders, if they really are, I think they're sick perverts pretending they are just so they can fucking do whatever, but they're having story time for children. Transgenders. I think they're trying to groom these kids into being gay or whatever. 
it's it's I can't even believe it. parents would even allow their kids to be around that. It's truly fucking sick, and the school is even allowing it. There's something really sick going on at so many levels in government schools um, with liberals and Democrats. There's something really sick going on. It's, it's really sick, and this is one of the reasons why Putin is attacking Russia. They've already discovered many child porn rings, and. Uh, child trafficking and prostitution, fucking disgusting. They've rescued a lot of those kids already and they're destroying all the bioweapon labs that they're fucking cooking up their new viruses in. Anyways, I mentioned how I like kayaking in Stratford because that's where my mom was last alive. And uh, that's not the only reason why I kayak there. But you know, thinking about that, now it's summer. Every time summer comes around, I see the lilies blooming and um, this reminds me of death when I see that. My ex died uh, soon after summer, and when I was visiting her in the hospital, I'd see lilies everywhere. And then my mom was in the hospital, I see lilies everywhere. I even put lilies on my mom's uh, casket, sort of thing, when she was cremated. So, and this always reminded it, and you should always be reminded and should never forget. But there's just a lot of suspicious things that happen around that. I find it odd that her heart was so fucked up. And I blame my family. They basically killed her. Not knowingly. And, but, uh... First of all, they move her out of her house into my mom, my sister's place in Vermont. My sister takes her off her heart meds and her diuretic. She needed to be on those. My sister had no right in hell doing that. Specialists fucking prescribed that shit. I can't believe she did that. And then she finally clued in, oh, we better put her back on her diuretics. Yeah, so there's damage number one. Probably did a lot of great damage. How many months was she not on her heart meds? Because they're too cheap to fucking buy the, heart, the medication in the States, perhaps. <clears throat> so guaranteed that damaged her heart. Even bef before that, every time my si mom's at my sister's, something happens. She falls down the stairs at my sister's, breaks her ribs. My sister doesn't even take her to the damn hospital to get checked out. Why? Because it's too cheap. So, if she never went to my sister's, she would have lived at least another five years. Then they ship her back to Stratford, Ontario. To, and shoved her into an old age home at Cedarcroft. <sighs> she never wanted to be in an old age home. She thought she was there just to get better. I go, no, you're here for good now. And I think that devastated her because she never wanted that to happen. And, and it was devastating to me too because she had me promise her that that would never happen. And there she is, her worst nightmare. Having her house sold, being put into an old age home, these things would have weighed on her heart too. So now my mom is in the old age home and you know, they would give her her meds on a tray and just leave them beside her bed. She's not gonna take them. They're not gonna feed them to her. How many times did she make uh, miss taking her meds? She wasn't eating, they told my brother. So it's very possible she wasn't taking her meds. Further damaging her heart. Uh, one morning, they found her laying on the floor. She, they didn't know that she broke her leg. So she went to the washroom at some point. Probably her leg broke from the pressure and fell down. And uh, so they put her back into the damn bed. And they didn't clue in that her leg was broken until about 12 in the afternoon when she was complaining about pain in her leg. So then they take her to the hospital and she has a heart attack going into the hospital. She's never had a heart attack in her life. So I think all these things were weighing on our heart. Now she's got the stress of a broken leg, going in an ambulance to a to hospital. She's probably like, oh, now what, right? And then during the operation, she almost died in that as well. More damage to the heart. Um, I don't think she ever would have recovered or healed that leg. 
Good luck. And, and if she did, she'd probably never be able to walk again. She'd lose all her muscle strength and everything, I, I assume. And just the stress of even recovering. Then she gets pneumonia in the hospital. Because I think she aspirated by the nurse feed, trying to feed her medication and food. And Because someone did mention aspiration. So that will happen. It will cause pneumonia. Sorry, I'm just itchy right now. <laughs> just keep touching my face. Um, her heart was really fucked at this point. I, I was seeing the monitor and it was just like... What, 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 what? I'm going, holy shit. Don't even want to say anything to her, right? Flatline it or something. It, it was really scary. And she was laying there going, help me, help me. Toy touching her chest. And I never thought in a million years it was her heart. I thought she was referring to the, maybe the pain from the um, pneumonia. So I go, oh, don't worry, it's pneumonia. And she shook her head like, oh, fuck. Because she never wanted to end up like her mother, who died of pneumonia as well. And uh, I remember her t shaking her head like, oh, damn it. Because she knows usually the end result of what, what could happen with pneumonia. And uh, she seemed to do better with an oxygen tube in her nose. But this is an unbelievable thing. My brother told me he had the technician pull the oxygen tube out of her fucking nose. Oh, she doesn't like that because she would have found it irritating or whatever. But too bad. I noticed a difference when she had the oxygen tube in her nose and she was doing better because she has pneumonia for fuck's sake. She needs the oxygen. For, for him to say, oh, just pull that out. She doesn't like it. What a fucking idiot. And I can't believe a technician would do that. Can they really have the power to do that? So that, again would damage her body, her heart, whatever, with the lack of oxygen. So basically my sister and my brother killed my mom with their stupid fucking decisions. Unbelievable. My brother, Sean, and sister tr tried to prevent me from going to the hospital, which is really sick, and I still don't understand that. Really, really bizarre. What, what they wanted to kill her? Because they couldn't wait to get their fucking hands on her money? Fuck, who knows? You know, come to think of it, I remember a strange thing my mom said when she was in the old age home. Uh, my brother Shannon left the room, and Kim, the crazy girl that I was with, my mom was talking to her, and she goes, Oh, Shannon doesn't care much for Stephen. He says he's not one of us. What the hell is he saying that shit to my fucking mom for? Perhaps she is going, where's Stephen? Why doesn't he come visit? And Shannon would go, oh, don't worry about it. He's not one of us. So what a fucking asshole. No one told me that they moved back in Canada. Now she was in Stratford. To keep that a secret from me is really fucking bizarre. Really bizarre. I'll tell you what else is bizarre that Shannon did at the celebration of life after my mom died. Obviously, you'd have a celebration of life after she died. Um... Why don't we do a celebration of life while people are alive? Wouldn't that make sense? Let's start doing that while they're alive so they can see it and partake in it. Anyways. After the celebration of life, they are all staying at a hotel in Stratford. So I didn't book a room there. I don't want to spend my mom's money on a hotel room because they all used her money to stay there. I didn't want to do that. I, didn't, I don't live far from Stratford, 30 minutes, so I thought it was more rightfully to just go home and sleep. But no, they all go there to the hotel. So we thought we'd go over there just to say hi, see what's going on. So we walk into the hotel lobby. There's a swimming pool, an indoor pool to the left. I look through the window. I see Georgia, my cousin's daughter, running as fast as she can what the hell is she running as fast as she can for? Right after she sees me and Kim walking in. What's so fucking urgent? I assume she went running over to my brother Shannon. What's the problem? We can't come say hi? Bizarre. Then, even more bizarrely, my brother Shannon comes running out of the swimming pool and running towards the front desk, dripping wet with a towel around him. Like, how fucked up is that? But what was so urgent for him to run towards the front desk? 
because he saw us, we intercepted him. He had the look of shock that we were intercepted him and saw him in this weird state. He was just like, just stunned look in his face. I go, what the fuck are you doing? What was he going to do? Go to the front desk and say, don't allow us in? Don't tell us what room they're in? Or to warn my brothers and sister and whatever upstairs that I'm there? They're hiding fucking something for him to be doing that. Very suspicious the way he was acting. Especially after a celebration of life. A lot of things don't add up, and it's probably exactly why they don't contact me to this day. They're all, they're fucking guilty of something, and I wish I fucking knew what. Well, since we're talking about Stratford, and my mom's last time being alive in Stratford, um, I'm also showing you some photos of me kayaking in Stratford this summer. I went there, and, uh, you know what? In the river, it's great for kayaking, and they got all kinds of swans that swim along with you. It's quite nice. You go under nice bridges and all kinds of stuff. So when I went there, it was amazing because uh, I had no idea that it was going to be the whole group of people were kayaking there that evening with lights all over the kayak. I go, holy shit, that's going to be cool. What a great time to, what, what a great day to pick. Because every other day I picked to kayak, before that, it was always too windy. I didn't want to be battling the wind and rough water. So it was perfect time to go. It was meant to be, I guess. So I got some cool pictures. It was an amazing experience, paddling along with the lights, lighting up the river. Amazing. So here's the pictures now. Yeah, so I arrived in Stratford on Lake Victoria, which is really just a damned river turned into a lake. But yeah, here we are, saddling up with our lit up canoes and kayaks and uh at least 60 some odd canoes and kayaks were here and off we go under lit up bridges and man look at this what a cool experience well that was really quite amazing kayaking the stratford river at night time with the kayaks all lit up absolutely beautiful you know you see people walking along the river lovers holding hands sitting on the benches uh, I couldn't help but think, you know, that's what summer is all about, falling in love, it's great. But you know, when uh, summer ends, a lot of relationships end too. And I'm thinking, oh, someone's going to be crying at the end of this summer. And I couldn't help but think, hey, I got a song just about that. It's called Susie's Crying. And uh, she has a hard time finding love, this young girl. And... Uh, thinks her world is ending. Meanwhile, she's got many years ahead of her. So I wrote a song called Susie's Crying to give her hope. Don't give up on finding love. And here's that song now, Susie's Crying, that I wrote in 1990, I believe. And the first time I recorded this song was uh, in 1990, actually in Hollywood at my friend's apartment that he was, he was renting when he was going to school there. So um, I never played or sang that song ever since 1990. So it was really quite a amazing revisiting it and after all these years it felt like I it was just yesterday doing that song so here is the new version of the song it's not much different than the first just added a few more backups and I'll shut up now and here's the video I created for that song Susie's Crying
Wow, wasn't that fantastic? Bringing that song back to life, it's great. Absolutely amazing. I think I did a great job, and it's too bad Susie was crying. But you know, the only cure for the summertime blues is going to the beach, ice cream, surfing, boating, girl watching. <laughs> the beach cures all your blues. And the first beach I hit this summer was Ipawash Beach, and uh, here it is now. Oh, welcome to Ipawash Beach, Ontario, Canada, on Lake Huron. Fantastic. Check this out. You'd swear you were in Jamaica or Cuba. But no. This is on the Great Lakes here in Canada. No sharks. No stingy, annoying fish. No jellyfish crap in the water. Just pure, clean, fresh water. Fantastic. And the sand here was silky and smooth. No rocks, no sticks in the water. You can walk out forever. Amazing. Just check this out. 
I haven't been here in a long time, so it was really great to come back. And I'm glad I did. People kayaking, swimming, picking up your girlfriend, <laughs> dropping her. Yeah, you know, go for a nice walk. Ah, so peaceful. You know what? That was so nice. Let's do it again. <laughs> Not always as smooth the water. Hey, where's she going? Get back here. Yeah, get back here. What are you doing taking off? <laughs> yeah, danger, no trespassing. This is where the military used to practice for World War II with live ammunition and stuff, so you might get blown up walking around here. <laughs> So yeah, they got those signs all along Lake Huron. They were practicing for D-Day on these beaches. But you know, it's so nice. I'm going to walk down here. No trespassing. Fuck you. I'm going down here. Land is for everyone. This used to be part of the provincial park. But now the natives took it over. But I'm going down anyways. Check out this stream coming out of the forest. You think you're in Costa Rica... Or Dominican. This is native land. Well, since I was born here in Canada, it's my land too. <laughs> so I'm free to walk down here whenever I want. Look, it's beautiful. This is our old remnants of a highway from 1920 or earlier. There was a highway going along here where the old Ford Model T cars would cross, horse and buggies. That's all that's left to it. Yeah, it's quite beautiful down here. As long as I don't get an arrow in the back. <laughs> or a, a tomahawk whipped at me. But you know, I'm here for a mission. I'm not just here for the beauty of it. I got kind of a darker reason to be down here. A lot of things to think about and ponder. This used to be a provincial park. This property here. And um, then the natives took it back. But it was a provincial park for many years. And this is where my dad came in October 10th, 1968. And supposedly blew his head off in his Volkswagen bus. So I wanted to be down here in the area that he did it. And it's very creepy and disturbing. But I had to do it. Well, I tell you. Very strange to be in this location at Pawash Beach. This section here that I'm in now is now taken over by the natives because it was their land to begin with. But before, it used to be a provincial park here in Canada. And this is where my dad was last alive. And it's kind of creepy and eerie that this whole area is deserted. Very much like, like everything was disappeared, just like my dad disappeared in 1968. Came here in a VW bus that he just bought and decides to shoot himself in the head, apparently, so we're told. So very, uh, that would be nice to come down to where he was last alive and, uh, it gives you eerie, it's such a beautiful place, this beach, but an eerie uh, experience as well. But, you know, I figured it was about time to do something like this. Check out this picture. My dad with his dad, my grandfather, they enjoyed the beach just like I did. And I can guarantee you, they were sitting on this very same beach in Ipawash. Because they lived in Sarnia, they just drive up and hit the beach. So it's very amazing and interesting and sad and all these things to be sitting in the same spot where they would come visit all the time. Well, here I am leaving the spot left with still questions and speculation. Well, here's Janet reading a book. Present day on the beach. No matter what happens in our lives, the beach will always be here. We come and go, but the beach will remain.
Well, you know, I'm going to take my blow-up kayak and uh, paddle out to where the provincial park used to be, where the beach is. And it's pretty cool view from here, and the water is amazing. I, saw, I think I saw a pike jump beside me. It was amazing. Yeah, so no arrows shot into my boat, because those are natives that you see there enjoying the beach. So we rented a cottage here. Lake Huron Sunrise Cottages. And it was great. You know, you got the kitchen in there and all that. That's excellent. I love the cottage life. And, you know what's awesome? Checking out the sunsets on Lake Huron. Or any lake, but it's just a great view here. From the cottage. Pretty nice. So relaxing. Nothing will take away your misery and sadness like a beach will or nature in the woods or whatever it is a must to get your soul grounded again it's a must for me that's for sure I'll just let you enjoy this without me yapping my mouth if you see that point over there of land over there is Kettle Point. And why is it called that? Well, these, these rocks are all over the place. They're round and smoothed out, and they look like kettles. And that's why they call it Kettle Point, because they're all over the place. They were formed during the Ice Age. When the ice was pushing forward, it would roll boulders so much that it would round them out, creating these big marbles. <laughs> Pretty cool. Kettle Point. Great for sitting on, photographing. Relaxing. Not sure why this cross is here, but it looks cool. Makes for a good photo. Look at this one, still stuck in the ground. And it shows the ground above it that was rolling it and rounding it out pretty cool it's amazing to see that's still there it's not placed there that is there from when it was formed it's just the ground and water has er eroded away the ground to expose it so here i am at kettle point in uh ontario canada this is the only place in the world that you'll find rock formations like this other than australia so australia and kettle point here in ontario canada they're formed when the Ice Age was happening, the ice is pushing its way forward, rolling all this dirt and sediment over top of these rocks, and they just smoothed out during the progression of the ice moving forward and backwards. So you end up with these amazing balls of rock, as you've seen in other video clips and photos. Yeah, unreal, eh? <laughs> this is called Kettle Point because these look like kettles. Now here's one completely exposed in right in line with the sun setting. Beautiful. Some Canadian geese swimming leisurely along the calm water this evening. Beautiful. All over you'll find these pieces of shell laying all over the ground. Now, let's check out that sunset again. You can't just see that once. Ah, so peaceful. Now, just up the road from Ipawash Beach is Port Franks Beach. Only 10 minutes up the road north on Lake Huron. And man, I love this place, so it would be crazy not to come here on the way home. So yeah, look at this. Beautiful scenery. This river flows into Lake Huron. Look at the vegetation. These beautiful purple weeds or whatever they might be. This is summer to me. The sun, the smell of the vegetation, near the water, fishing, hiking, whatever. Yeah, so this river flows into Lake Huron. 
right into the most beautiful beach you could possibly find. Look at that. This takes your breath away. And this little river is kind of cool to kayak and I haven't done it yet, but I will one day. So peaceful. Takes your breath away coming down here. Well, might as well find a spot to uh, suntan. Looks like Janet found her spot. Beautiful. Putting her feet into the sand, and I like to put my feet in the sand by walking. I love walking the beach right when I get there. And running, jogging, have a nice jog. That's enough. So now I'll sit down and enjoy the sun as well. The sand feels so nice under your feet. Beautiful. Love the driftwood. Hey, what's that? What the hell was that? Am I getting a flashback from acid? <laughs> Is that a stingray flying in the sky? A jellyfish or something? What the hell is that? Fish flying in the air? Holy shit. Well, no, it's not acid. It's just a guy likes to fly those kites. Look at this playground. Beautiful. Great sand, water, driftwood sticking out. Birds love to perch on it. What a playground. Makes you feel young and free again. Like you're just a child. Build a sand castle. Run into the water. Just empty your mind from any worries. Even kids like to climb on the driftwood sticking out of the water. Well, there's those flashbacks. <laughs> kites. They're kites. Fish. Well, what a beautiful place. Wasn't that fantastic? Spending the day at Port Franks on the beach. Beautiful. Almost as beautiful as my flowers that are still blooming that I planted here uh, this past May. But you know, Ontario is not only great for its beaches and the, uh, the Great Lakes, we got the Muskoka areas. There's all kinds of millions of lakes in the Muskoka area, all over Ontario really. So I went to Minden, Ontario, 12 mile lake, and uh, I will show you that journey right now. Another beautiful place in Ontario is the Muskoka area. We went to Minden and a cute little town. Nice walkways along the river, ice cream, strange rainbow benches, kind of creepy. Anyways, we stayed at the Red Umbrella Inn on 12 Mile Lake. And here is the inn itself. It's been around since the 1800s, I believe. And uh, here's a look at the property beautiful lake beautiful little cottages you can rent and uh, here's the back side of it patio restaurant area fire pit tables where you can have your lunch here's the little cabin that we rented it's cute and cozy and uh, Janet couldn't wait to get in there and has everything you need nice little sitting area in the front of the covered front entrance and here's Janet with uh, Rusty, the local dog that likes to come down and mooch off the vacationers. Here is the dock area. Nice big blow up dinosaur. <laughs> you can lay on and relax on or float in the water. Go sailing, canoeing, excellent. So peaceful and nice. A little rough for canoeing, so I'll stay on the dock today. <laughs> here's a bell that you ring and let people know that lunch is ready. Come and get it. <laughs> and here it is. <laughs> this perch that I caught. It'll feed like maybe a mouse. <laughs> here I am with Rusty on the dock. He lives in a great big mansion up the road, but the owner is such an asshole, he likes to hang out with us instead. Well, 
I think I'll just relax and have a nice coffee. Enjoy the view. 12 Mile Lake. Minden, Ontario. Well, I'm also going to chop some wood for, have a, for a fire tonight. And this is funny. Rusty's waiting here. Not just relaxing. He's waiting for someone to chop wood. Because once someone does, he jumps into action. And you will see. This vibration, he knows, will scare out chipmunks out of their hole. And here he is. He'll sit for hours with his face stuck down in the chipmunk hole. <laughs> he knows the vibrating of the chopping of the wood will scare them out of the hole. Yep, so there's some wood for the fire tonight. Oh, yeah. Enjoy some coffee. <laughs> Hey, good morning. Check out this view. Here I am in Minden Hills, Halliburton Highlands, kind of in between the two, really. And uh, Algonquin Park is just that way. Here we are in Ontario, Canada. Beautiful. Millions and millions of lakes here in Ontario. Kind of close to the Muskoka area that you saw last season. And um, now we're near Algonquin Park. And it's great to be around here because I used to come up in this area, about two hours north, to a place called Burke's Falls. No surprise, that's my last name, Burke. My grandfather had a cottage there, so it was great going there in the summer, fishing, seeing the minks and the chipmunks running around, um, just being in the wilderness, love it. So cheers to my, the memory of that, my grandfather, and uh, great up north, northern woods of Ontario, Canada. Yeah, since I mentioned Burke's Falls, I'm also show you some clips that I found some pictures of uh, in the past. When we went to Burke's Falls. It was a lake very much like the one I'm on in Minden. And uh, here's me and my two other brothers, Chris and Sean, sitting on the dock, looking out at the lake. It was fantastic. We loved it here. And um, here's a picture of a boat, Muskoka boat, which my grandfather had in the early days. And uh, he had a beautiful boathouse. It was great fishing with him on the boats. Yeah, so I remember this day very well. There was no bathtub or shower. You had to go in the lake, the freezing cold lake, and bathe. And here we are bathing in our <laughs> cheesy ass bathing suits. And I remember this day vividly looking up at my brother Chris, going, wow, what the hell is he doing with his hair? It's so weird. He's only one year older than me, and he's way taller. What the hell? <laughs> Anyways, I love feeding the chipmunks. It was great. I love fishing, nature, the woods, feeding the chipmunks. I loved it here, Burks Falls. Here's a photo of my grandparents and my four, uh, my three other brothers and myself and cousins that I just met on this vacation. And we never met them before or ever again after this. I can't even tell you who the hell they were or what side of the family they are on. But anyways, that's my uh, blast to the past. You know what's a great thing to do on these lakes? Go canoeing. When the sun sets, the lakes becomes really calm and you just go canoeing along the shore. It's beautiful, check out the cottages and uh, you see the loons swimming on the lake. They'll swim along with you, same with ducks and whatnot. It's an amazing experience. Well, a canoeing I shall go. They supply all the canoes and paddle boats and all whatnot here, so I didn't have to blow up a boat this time. It was great. Let's turn it around. Sometimes it's hard to know which way, which is the front and which is the back. <laughs> I'll take a guess. I'll. Tr I think this is the back. All right, off I go. I think of all the. Pioneers and natives from the past have canoed this lake. You think of all the activities, fishing, building, pioneering that happened many years ago. So here's a view from my boat. I took pictures because that was a little easier to do. And uh, see cottages, 
nestled into the forest all along the lakeside here on 12 Mile Lake. Just beautiful. What's that? These guys have an airplane? Wow. This is where Rusty lives. This big house here. And they own that airplane, I believe. Just a massive place. They have their own beach, too. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. But the owner's quite the asshole. So, I don't blame Rusty for wanting to hang out with all the people at the inn instead of them. Oh, hello, folks. Fellow canoers. They were at the inn as well. Yeah, so back from canoeing, you know where you are when you see that big uh, blow-up dinosaur. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, come back and uh, relax after a nice canoe ride. Easy does it. Oh, yeah. Well, it's great to come back to this little man-made beach. I think I'll join Janet and uh, relax in the sun for a bit. There's a little cottage. Go have dinner. Go sit by the dock. Beautiful sunsets here. Lake gets so calm at night and peaceful. Look at the sunset. You know what? Perfect time to start up a fire. Luckily, I chopped up these logs earlier, as you saw. I'll try and get this one in there without burning my hair off. <laughs> oh, that's great. What a great way to finish the day. I was glad to show you our little excursion to Minden, Ontario, in the Muskoka area. Awesome. Mmm, let's eat. Oh, yes, Weber's or Weber's, whatever it's called. A great uh, place to stop off on the way up to the Muskoka area on Highway 400 here in Canada. People love stopping here and get their homemade burgers and fries and ice cream. It's a great little resting spot on your journey north. Oh man, those burgers were absolutely phenomenal. What a great stopover on the way home on Highway 400 in Ontario. But you know, on the way home I realized I passed a lake. And it's by Guelph, Ontario. And I realized, holy shit, I drove all those hours up north to, to a, go to a lake when I could have just stayed right here. So yeah, I went to Guelph Lake and checked it out. Absolutely phenomenal for kayaking. They got a nice beach and everything else. So come along and enjoy the scenery with me. Grand River Conservation Authority, Guelph Lake Conservation Area. Great place for hiking, boating, camping, fucking around, fishing, swimming, picnicking, boating, whatever. <laughs> awesome. Got here in my new Honda Element. Great vehicle. Hey, check out that beach. That's pretty good for a small little lake. What the hell's going on? A festival? Wonder what the occasion is. Look at these beautiful willow trees. Hey, someone's selling pizza. Awesome. But what's going on? So many people, all these tents. Um, hmm. People are exercising, that's bizarre. All wearing the same clothes. I think some of those girls are going to have to exercise for a month before they even... <laughs> oh, it must be a fat farm festival. I don't know. People are stretching, trying to lose weight. I don't know what's going on. Man, some of those women are huge. What the fuck? Anyway. <laughs> Dragon boat festival? Those girls are going to be in the boat? Yeah, you know they're going to lose. <laughs> now here's a more trim and slim team. They'll probably win, but the fat cows will be last, I'm sure. Anyway, look at the festival. And what a great time. It's going to be uh, interesting to watch this. You know, you don't have to be in a competition. You can just relax and rent a boat here as well. Canoe, uh, kayaks, or just sit on a canoe like Janet is there. <laughs> you got to get in the boat, Janet, not on top of it. Anyways, <laughs> not bad. Not a bad beach. Just for a small lake, pretty cool. This is a great discovery. Sorry for the wind noise. Totally annoying. Yeah, so here we are. On the beach on Guelph Lake. This is pretty good. Don't have to drive. A oh, here we go. Here's a team practicing. The coach sits at the front. Uh, yelling at them to row, row, row. Row your boat. Yeah, so I think they're going to be ready to uh, 
set off here. They're lining up. They're lining up. They're going to get ready. Everyone's all excited. The anticipation. Everyone's freaking out. Not. <laughs> and the horn's off, and they are off. They are paddling. They're paddling like mad. They are paddling, sweating, swearing. They're, oh my god, the, the coaches are swearing and yelling at them. Row, you fat pieces of shit. Row, you motherfuckers. <laughs> there they go. Who's gonna win? We're not too sure. Yeah. And I'm not sticking around to wait to find out because I got other things to do. <laughs> I want to just go kayaking, drive around, see the sights. And I found this other small little beach. They got two beaches here. And there's Janet sitting again, eating an apple. That's her favorite activity, activity sitting. <laughs> but I like to walk around, kayak, explore. That's my thing. Yeah, this is a great park. Awesome. A lot of people come here, apparently. Yeah, so here's a group of people going off kayaking. This lake is amazing for kayaking. I did it, and it's like, wow, phenomenal. Great discovery. Can't wait to explore it. And um, Canadian geese swimming around. Really nice. What a beautiful day. I advise you to come on and check it out. Guelph, Ontario. in Guelph, Ontario at Guelph Lake. Pretty damn nice. I drove all the way up north to a lake. All those hours and gas money for what? I could have just came here. Oh well. This is beautiful. Great place to kayak, canoe. They got a dragon boat festival here as well. They sell ice cream and all kinds of stuff. This is excellent. Can't wait to get into my kayak. Oh yeah. Hey, just hanging out at my dog's doghouse. Toby, that you know, passed away three years ago, 2019. So I still haven't taken down his doghouse. You know, I like to remember him, come out here and think about the past. And speaking of the past and memories, um, it was my mom's birthday on August 27th, the past. And so I thought I'd go down, put some fake flowers at her grave, and then head on past there to Port Stanley, the place that my mom took us all through our childhood to raise monarchs, swim, walk the beach, whatever. It was fantastic. So uh, I'll show you that trip right now. Not my dad's grave, the graveyard, that you've probably noticed before in earlier episodes. I'm on my way to the beach, actually, and I noticed that it's August 27th, which is my mom's birthday. So I thought I'd come down, stop by, say hello, because I put part of her ashes with her mother and her grandmother, so I bought some flowers to put with their grave. And uh, can't forget my dad, right? So here I am, it's kind of a nice little pilgrimage to the graveyard on the way to the beach and uh, happy birthday mom. I'm gonna go plant some flowers there at her grave now. I put a few ashes there on last Halloween show in season four. Check that out. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mom. Got some flowers here for her birthday, August 27th. And she, here she is with her mother. And um, she is also at her grandmother's, but I'm gonna put these flowers here. Well, maybe I'll have to put one at her grandmother's as well, because the ashes are split up. Anyways, happy birthday. Here are some fresh, fake flowers from my mom for her birthday. You can't put real ones here because the deer will eat them. So this is going to have to do. Now, off to the beach. Mm. 
And here we are in Port Stanley. And look at that. Some girls sunbathing on the Port Stanley sign carved into a rock. She's looking over the beach, the beautiful beach of Port Stanley. It's a packed, beautiful day here. Fantastic. Everyone's enjoying the water, boating, canoeing, sailing, kayaking. Just great. You know, in case you fall over and drown, you got lifeguards to save you. <laughs> if they're not talking to someone else, paying attention. <laughs> hey, welcome. I'm finally at Port Stanley again. Love this beach. You know, it's a great place to come and relax, enjoy the sun. You know, went to my, the, the grave for my mom, where some part of her ashes are, and it's great to come to Port Stanley because it gave me a lot of peace when she died. So it's great to finally be here this summer, and now I'm just gonna enjoy the day and walk around. I'll show you some sights. Well, first, I'll show you the brand new pier here in Port Stanley on Lake Erie. Fantastic, state of the air, great place for couples to walk, and man, that girl is hot as fuck. Mm -mm. <laughs> hey, there's a lighthouse. <laughs> Get my mind off that girl. And you know, Canadian geese love the pier too. They come here to relax, sunbathe, you know. I also like to enjoy just peering over the pier. <laughs> Looking at the beach, the water, the birds flying in the air. It's just so relaxing, just beautiful. Another great viewpoint is from the lifeguard stands. Yeah, this is great. I'm looking for hot chicks <laughs> that might need help. <laughs> They'll need help from me. I think I'll stroll the beach and find some hot chicks. Mmm, yeah, my favorite activity. I'm a fucking perv. <laughs> yeah, walking. It's great to feel your feet in the water and the sand. It's so relaxing, just even hearing the water and the seagulls. It's so great for your soul. Build yourself a sand castle. And if, uh, hey, unicorns are your style, you can blow up a great big huge one and party on it. Fucking great. Look at these people. That looks fun. Amazing. I think I'll walk down this part. <laughs> First, I'll check out the main beach again from this angle. Seagulls enjoying the beach as well. What a great day. Hear that music? There was a party at a house. I should have filmed it. Anyways, here I am in the private part of the beaches. And um, great driftwood to sit on. Some nice hot girls on a jet ski to look at while I'm relaxing. <laughs> There's that fucking unicorn. Look at these burly guys with this unicorn. Fucking hilarious. Oh, look at that nice ass jiggling around carrying that big blow up boat. I'll get another look at that. Zoom in. Nice. A little flabby, but that'll work for me. <laughs> Seagulls are loving the sights too. Enjoying the day. Look at these cottages right on the beach. Oh, back to girls on a paddleboard. Great scene. It's great when the, the sun goes down, the lake gets calm and nice, and it's great for paddleboarding, kayaking, swimming, and uh, of course, girl watching as well. <laughs> I think I'll relax here on this driftwood. What a great location for a photo. And uh, yeah, me goofing around by these carved out uh, characters on the beach. Uh, take two of the hamming it up on the beach. <laughs> You know me, I like to ham it up. Well, it was so nice at the beach. I stayed the night in my van and uh, because I love it in the early morning at the beach. And um, you may be just like me and a few others who just love to come down to the beach early in the morning. It's beautiful, it's quiet, it's peaceful. There's no crowds. Just the odd person coming down to check out the beach, birds flying, someone maybe walking their dog. Someone chasing seagulls. But you know, no crowds, not packed. It's just uh, amazing. You know, this is like seven in the morning. Here's the crews coming to change the garbages, get ready for the big, busy day. Even the lifeguard stands are still asleep. But you know, some people like to have a nice early swim in the water. Um, I do too, if that's my form of bathing in the morning. But you can also use baby wipes if you're sleeping at the beach in your van. But yeah, look how beautiful the beach is when no one's around. It's so peaceful. There's no kids screaming and yelling. No people yelling and screaming, running around. 
no jet annoying assholes on jet skis fuck I hate those guys ruining the peaceful atmosphere yeah good morning to me Just have a nice little stretch on the beach have a little walk down before the crowds come just listen to the waves and that's it grab a stick and toss it in the water the only thing annoying in the background is some guy with a leaf blower or something but anyways I'll come and check out the beach at the lifeguard stand what a great spot sit down by these nice long grass that grow out of the sand dunes just awesome just beautiful man what a beautiful morning here in Port Stanley Ontario at the beach with my beach pants that I bought in 1990 funky neon colors really makes tans pop out hopefully I have enough tan to show off right now I don't know yeah so uh, I used to always pretend I was in California being on this beach and um, I finally got to go in 1990 my friend was going to school there so I went down and uh, I actually bought these pants in 1990 I think I just said that but anyways I wrote a song about dreaming about going to California called I'll be there I finally got to go there and it was great in 1990 so it was suitable to wear these pants being on the beach and to introduce this song called I'll Be There, written by me, of course. And here's the video now. Just can't miss me Here's the way 